options. And now we're going to get to another really, really great option when it comes to <laughs> one of the best draft classes in the NFL. Did something really unique and really created a, a new culture and excitement around their team. We're going to welcome in today Locked on Bears host Lauren Cox at Cox Sports One on Twitter. You can catch him every Monday through Friday as well over at the Locked on Bears podcast. Lauren, thanks so much for joining us today. Well, right now it's the Locked on Justin Fields podcast. That's right. <laughs> Speaking of that, you know, the Broncos fans, I want to tell you this, Lauren, Broncos fans are up in arms that Denver didn't draft Justin Fields at nine, but uh, he wasn't so high on their board. And, and it was really surprising, I think, for the most part, that we saw him slip into the teens. Chicago, they made a move to get up there. Now you have a dilemma. Justin Fields, a very exciting rookie talent, has the potential to be a, a very exciting player in this league for quite some time. We have Andy Dalton, QB1. And the Chicago Bears social media team had even tweeted it out a couple a little bit ago. Do you think that changes coming into 2021? Is that a dilemma, Cody? I mean, it's <laughs> all the dilemma. I think it's, uh, first of all, it's a, it's a good problem to have if you can call it a problem. I mean, it's, it's just a matter of time, right? As soon as that pick came in, you start the clock on Andy Dalton's time as QB1. The Bears fully intend to start him week one and give this the full Alex Smith, Patrick Mahomes treatment. That's what Matt Nagy wants to do. That's how he envisions this playing out. But I don't think Andy Dalton is quite Alex Smith. And I think more importantly, I don't think the Bears supporting cast around Andy Dalton is quite the supporting cast they had around Alex Smith that allowed them to keep rolling with Alex Smith and still win football games and get to the playoffs and do those sorts of things without having to go to their rookie quarterback. So I don't think we're going to get a full season of Andy Dalton, but I, I don't think the Bears are going to budge on week one at least I'd be surprised if they make Justin Fields that week one starter because I do think they are really going to try and stay committed to stretching this out we'll see if Nick Foles is a part of this somewhere in the in the quarterback <laughs> room as, as a mentor versus a, a backup option to maybe even keep Justin Fields on the bench longer but I, I think they really like this this idea of quarterback development even though a lot of us might feel like Justin Fields is one of the more pro ready quarterbacks at the top of this first round yeah, absolutely. I know I certainly do. I'm all about getting Justin Fields out there as quickly as possible, but that's why I'm not an NFL head coach because I get too excited about stuff. Mm -hmm. But when it comes down to this, you did a great job over at Lockdown Bears breaking down sort of what you've seen over the course of the offseason and what it tells you about the direction that the Chicago Bears have headed. Getting a guy like Justin Fields without having to really mortgage the future, look at how much the San Francisco 49ers, for instance, paid to get ahead to get a guy like Trey Lance. Can you tell us a little bit about how successful or what you've seen so far and how successful or unsuccessful this transition has been that you've noticed for the Chicago Bears in terms of the direction it looks like this, uh, at least this offense is heading. Yeah, it, there seems to be a clear emphasis on trying to be, I mean, I, every offense is trying to be more explosive and more successful, of course. I mean, that's, that's what every mm -hmm. offense wants to do. But the Bears have put a, a particular emphasis on that deep to intermediate area of the field this offseason. That Justin Fields comes in as one of the most accurate deep ball quarterbacks in college football. I think number one in PFF's accuracy downfield throwing in this draft mm -hmm. class, ahead of Trevor Lawrence, ahead of Zach Wilson, in that deep to intermediate range. And so they sign Marquise Goodwin from the 49ers, you know, five foot seven, just vertical speed threat. They, they draft Daz Newsom from North Carolina, another smaller slot, but yeah. vertical type threat. You got Allen Robinson, you've got Darnell Mooney. They weren't really able to get Jimmy Graham going as vertically as they'd want either. It just feels like that's generally the direction Matt Nagy wants to go to get this Bears offense to be less check down West Coast and more Andy Reid vertical passing West Coast with Patrick Mahomes. You, know, you don't have right. – Tyreek Hill, you don't have some of their different options. Obviously, you don't have Travis Kelsey either. That makes it a little bit hard to do exactly the way that Kansas City is, but it's steps in that direction. And I think long term, that's where Matt Nagy sees the vision of his offense. It's just a matter of how quickly they could get there and whether they truly do have the right parts for it. Right. Well, you know, they go and they add Tevin Jenkins to offensive line help is great because they made a few changes as well. They you know, a couple of tackles were gone. Charles Leno, he's going to be he's a free agent as of now. Uh, my question for you, we've seen kind of this experiment with Matt Nagy and, and pace in terms of ownership. We know that the pressure is on them this season. How much do you think things change if Chicago doesn't see success right away this year? Do you feel like they'll be gone or do you feel like they're going to look to bring somebody in? I think this Justin Fields pick pretty well locks them in for at least, you know, at least another year, I guess, you know, if things just go horribly and they somehow win four games this year, maybe that's 
you know, a different story. But I, I think there's a certain baseline of talent here that at least keeps them from the number one overall pick, you know, where where they mm-hmm. end up. But I think I think our drafting Justin Fields gives them some leeway to even miss the playoffs this season. We kind of thought heading into 2021, it was like, all right, they barely squeaked into the playoffs last year at 500 and two years in a row at 500. 2021 was going to be the year they have to win more games, be above 500, get into the playoffs and maybe win a playoff game to really keep their jobs. And now it kind of feels a little bit more like there's some breathing room. It's like, even if they go eight and eight and nine this year in the, you know, in the Mm -hmm. weird 17 game schedule, and maybe they miss the playoffs on that. As long as Justin Fields is coming along, as long as there's offensive progress, you know, it's you start to be able to build in more excuses as to why this year isn't the year that they're going to win the Super Bowl by any means. So I, I I think this was some sign of assurance for Matt Nagy and Ryan Pace that ownership doesn't want to shake the boat again. They don't want to make any kind of drastic changes at this point, And they're very much a close knit front office and coaching staff here for better or for worse. And for Bears fans mm-hmm. for a long time, it was for worse. And all of a sudden, one draft pick has Ryan Pace, the hero in Chicago again, after everyone was ready to fire him about four months ago. Well, especially if Rodgers is out of the division at the end of the year. Who knows? Right. I'm sure that that is a uh, storyline that Bears fans are watching very closely. (laughs) Yeah. uh, Cody, I don't know what your Broncos are waiting for. We're looking at our (laughs) – let's let's get this done. (laughs) I'm telling you, Broncos fans are ready to make the move happen now, but Green Bay, you know, they don't want to take on that $33 million dead cap. They may wait to just take on that $17 million, at least cut it in half a little bit. But even if Rodgers retires, you get to pay back so much money. I don't think that's going to be the financially responsible move there. He's going to play, but you know, it's between those two teams. I know you'd like him out of uh, the NFC North there. It opens things up, in my opinion, if that is the case. It gives Chicago, I think, a better chance to maybe be a favorite to win that division. So, yes, I, I feel you there. I don't know. For me, you know, you mentioned Tevin Jenkins. It's like I still have real concerns about this Bears offensive line. I mean, you cut both sure. your tackles, and un- like the Kansas City Chiefs, except the Chiefs, you know, they traded for Orlando Brown. They gave the highest-paid guard contract to Joe Thune. You know, they brought in all these different retooled offensive line. The Bears – the Bears used a second round pick at, at, for a right tackle that they're going to now transition to left tackle. And then, you know, they re signed Jermaine Effetti. They brought in uh, Elijah Wilkinson from the Broncos, who Denver wasn't exactly hurting to lose, you know. So they're going to compete at right, ta- right tackle. And then you've got a former undrafted free agent rookie. Well, who was, he was a former undrafted free agent, ready to start at center now full time after he was just kind of a last minute throw in last year. It's not. It, that's why I feel like it's not this is not a team that's built to win playoff games in 2021. They're not they're not terrible. There's there's enough baseline talent there, but you're asking a lot from young players developing. You're asking a lot from a new defensive coordinator who's barely been a position coach in the NFL before. There's a mm-hmm. there's a lot of swirling things. Is why Bears fans were so pessimistic and so just depressed for a lot of this offseason because it felt like our plan is all these broken pieces and Andy Dalton and, and that's how we're going to win games this season. Now with Justin Fields, it's like okay, everything's okay. Because this is not about 2021 anymore. It's about 22, 23, and 24. Yeah. A glimmer of hope for Bears fans. And I love to hear it. I love to see it. If you want to keep up with it, Lauren Cox doing a phenomenal job over at Locked On Justin Fields and Locked On Bears is probably the best way to find it on your favorite podcast app every Monday through Friday. He's breaking down Justin Fields every day, how it, you know, how the selection affects the roster, how it affects the receivers, how it affects the team moving forward. He's doing a phenomenal job over at Locked On Bears. We appreciate you being here with us, Lauren. Y'all can follow him on Twitter at Cox Sports One. And certainly we'll be seeing you again here soon before the offseason is out. Hey, thanks for having me, guys. I love having football on a Sunday in May. Absolutely.